What a great song. What an incredible song. We've come to praise him. I just love the feel. I love the message of that song. We're going to talk with the songwriter. Mark Yanders is here with us, as you can see already. And uh, he actually wrote the song, We've Come to Praise Him, that you just heard. Uh, great song, great songwriter. And I just want you guys to, we're going to hear from him tonight and just kind of hear his thoughts on this song, a little bit of background on it, and just um, his writing in general. And so, Mark, I'm glad to have you tonight. And uh, thanks for joining me. And as we talk about some of your music tonight, I want to just go ahead and jump right in. And uh, this will be pretty laid back and casual, but I just want to make sure we kind of get the essence of this song. Um, when did, Do you remember when you wrote the song and maybe like some of the inspiration behind this song? Uh, I think I wrote it about seven years ago. And um, I taught it to my church praise team. Actually, it was not a choir song because we didn't have a choir. And... Um, I, it just turned out so so good. It it was one of those songs. Actually, the three songs that I put on the UPCI CD, mm -hmm. they were three songs that came to me very quickly. It's just like they just rolled off of out mm -hmm. of my quickly. Some songs I have to struggle for. God just gives me a little line upon line precept. He really tests my faith on some of these songs, you know. And I've learned to have a little voice clip handy. Uh, at all times, because uh, sometimes God will just give me a line. and But these songs just seem to come so quickly. Um, the song, We've Come to Praise Him, for some reason, those songs come very easily, easy for me. Um, and it just came together, like, probably within a, a couple of weeks, I had it. It was unbelievable. That's awesome. Do you remember, like... Um... I'm just curious. Do you remember, like, did the did the melody kind of come quickly to you, or did you just did you have more of the music and the feel first, or how do you typically how does that does that happen for you typically? Um, I usually get like uh, a couple of little lines first, um, lyric lines, and and the tune kind of comes. All the chords don't come, but I, I can kind of hear the the chord structure in my head too because you know I play. And I, it, I just imagine like performing it in a church, and that seems to make it the process quicker too for me. Um, yeah. Do you typically like um, when you write? I know you said this one kind of came some somewhat quickly, but um, do you typically find that like you'll write pieces, or does a lot of it come right at one time? Well, like I said, some songs seem to come in pieces. Uh, God makes you really work for some of the songs. And I'm, I'm what you call a standalone writer. Like some people could go to a, a, a writing session for eight hours and they'll say, okay, on this such and such date, we're going to write from eight to five. I can't do that. It's not that I can't work with other people. It's just that I don't feel inspiration sometimes at eight in the morning because I'm a musician, you know. Right. <laughs> I'll feel... I'll feel a song come on to me in an air on an airplane. I'll go in the lavatory, <laughs> get in a voice clip, 
And I'll say like, I hear a four right here. Da, 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 da. I hear a five right here. <laughs> and then yeah. by the time, sometimes I'll even take like a little tiny Casio with me because I'm on the road a lot. Like I have a little toy Casio that's like this big that I bought at Target. <laughs> <laughs> but it works. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, and sometimes you do. You have to capture it in the moment when you hear it. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, when you wrote We Come to Praise Him, did you kind of, um, I think you already might have said you kind of heard it as a choir song, or did you just write it because you just you just felt the song? I still have the clip from when I first taught it to my praise team at home. So I didn't necessarily designate it for just a choir. Um, although I probably did hear it as a choir song, I actually also taught it at uh, GMWA at their national convention, uh, I think in 2017. So it was like a okay. 1500 voice mass choir. So it wow. can be, you know, I think most songs can be versatile. Mm -hmm. I think most songs, for me, I don't even need a choir. I love choirs. I'm a choir guy. I came from the mass choir era. I just, yeah. I have requires but if i have nine good singers i can make it work yeah, with right. new blend you know with all the new technology and stuff like that but um i kind of lost my thought oh, from that's that. fine what I, <laughs> that's what i was going to say was as 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 we just saw in the video you know we just took you know seven six or seven singers and um took this song and made it really sound you know really well with just a small amount of just like a small praise team and that's yeah. why I want to encourage churches tonight is this song does not have to have a choir at all. This can be done by a small praise team and it sounds very, very good. Now, I will kind of say too, you know, in the video, of course, you could hear the band and the, and the, and the, and the tracks and stuff, of course. And, and just so we can speak to that, you know, you can hear the organ just sounding so good. You're like, there's no organ on here. There's just a keyboard. Of course, that's the stems and the multi-track playing in the background. But I wanted to encourage churches, and you can speak to this too, Mark, if you don't mind, as far as multi-tracks and stems, um, how much they can advance and help churches that may only have two or three musicians and don't have all that instrumentation. Uh, stems and multi-tracks have really changed the game for that because of how much they bring in the feel and the music that can that can be provided by that. Do you agree? And I agree uh, in part, yes, I do. Um... I've been on the road for eight years doing clinics, concerts, all that sort of thing. And a lot of people have asked me, how do you stay so busy? And I, I say to God be the glory, I say this in all humility, but I, 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 I could be so busy all the time. Even during COVID, I had a lot of cancellations, obviously. But um, I think one thing is, is I could take a song and, and abbreviate it to make it work for a church. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of mold it into what's going to work for them. And so I think sometimes if you go to a church and you expect, um, you know, elementary level musicians or even, even intermediate musicians to play really complicated music, mm -hmm. they're going to shut down on you. Um, so that's where the multi tracks can help. But mm -hmm. In some ways, it can be a hindrance too if you just only rely on them. I've been to some churches where they use it, and the musicians are just kind of pretending like they're playing. They're not really doing much at all, so they're not practicing right. in there for hours and really striving to really play at the best of their ability. I think. Yeah. So, I think multi tracks are great. Um, I think they add a lot of instrumentation that most churches can't add. Um, I think as long as you can sing them to where you get to a point where God is really moving and working in that song and, um, and you can still turn this, turn a chorus around or whatever, which I know we have technology for that. Yeah. So I think it's somebody that can do that part of the tip, you know, the tech job. It's really, and that's, I agree with you hundred percent. Yeah. I've seen, cause you don't want it to replace uh, uh, you know, a live musician any day. If you have the instruments or you have the musicians, absolutely not. I would not. And you're right. Sometimes we can get lazy with multi-tracks, but, <laughs> but at the same time, I love it for churches that may not have that fully developed band yet. Um, or they only have a few musicians. That's where yep. I really see this being a huge help. Or <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's just amazing to, 
to have that. And I wanted to mention that, of course, um, with these new songs coming out and re-releasing these, uh, we'll have, of course, all the stems and tracks and everything like that for these songs, which is really cool because they're all apostolic um, musicians on there, which I love. I love it. They sound amazing. Mark, another question for you. Um, what do you, and I don't, you don't have to, you know, say more than you want, but as far as like your writing and um, I've always felt like, and just as my opinion, I've always felt like you have a gift for gospel. And I know that's probably because of your growing up and just what you were around, but I always feel like your, your music and your songs always, and I'm not saying you can't because I'm not putting you in one hole or, or another, you know, but at the same time, I love the fact that your music always has a good church feel to it. Is that just from your growing up and you being around that style of music or what do you think? Well, that's a large part of it, I would say. Uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Um, although I write a lot of songs that I, I think people have not heard and I do have a new CD coming out, hopefully okay. about six weeks to two months. And it's, it's going to show some of my contemporary side too. So I'm, I'm very versatile. Um, but I seem to be the go-to guy that people come to me for fast songs. <laughs> I remember you came to me for material. You were like, we are overloaded with slow songs. We need fast songs. I said, I'm the guy. I've got an <laughs> abundance of fast songs. And I think that is um, my, my dad's church across the street from a church of God in Christ. So I grew up hearing that gospel sound. And I just, you know, it's it's more than just taught. It's, a lot of times it's just caught. Mm -hmm. So um, that, and I think, uh, growing up in the West, we weren't always known as wildfire. <laughs> Even in the UPC, we were always known as, um, you know, a lot of shouting and running and dancing and yeah. carrying. Grew up in that environment. So I think I I just hear that music come out of me so much. Um, mm -hmm. So those fast shout songs come easy. I remember um, when I wrote Unspeakable Joy. I first wrote it with like a swing jazz beat, uh, like I've got joy, unspeakable joy. Okay. I, no, we could shout off of this. <laughs> <laughs> <Got joy. laughs> That's awesome. I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah. I um, I just I I'm so thankful for our apostolic writers. I really am, and I'm I'm so excited to see just more and more writers getting involved now. I mean, you've been doing this for a while and you're seeing, I'm sure you are seeing a lot of new apostolic writers coming on the scene and writing. And I think that's such a refreshing thing to see because I love the fact that our music is being, it's just getting better and better and the writing's getting better yeah. and the musicianship's getting, all of that. And so I'm very excited to hear you say what you said about you coming out with a new album. And you said it's even more like praise and worship, right? Is that what you were saying? It is. It's okay. all simple praise and worship, and I'm going to provide the, the stems all awesome. available for it. Even the lead sheets are going to come in simple, intermediate, advanced, so okay. all levels. I yep. love it. I love it. I'm glad and to hear it. I um, it's it's only a team singing. It's not a choir, and uh, because, like you said, so many of the churches now can't have a choir. You know, and I'm mostly working with teams you know, through this whole season. Absolutely. And that's, that's, I love it because I'm excited to see um, these songs as we're re-releasing these uh, be done by smaller teams. I think that's, I think they're very appropriate yep. for that. I hope you, um, you all watching have enjoyed this song by Mark Yandris. I, I really felt like he did a great job writing it and uh, it's just very usable in our churches. And that's one thing that I always look for and love to do is songs that are usable that are not super, super hard, but they you know, have at least enough in there that does challenge you a little bit, of course. I like that too. So Mark, I can't wait to hear more from you and uh, work with you more in the future as you release more and more music. And um, we'll be talking more about Weldon music and just how that will fit possibly and how we can work together. I'm excited about the future. I really am. Sure. And Mark, I love your writing and keep doing it. <laughs> keep up the good work. I know you, you write a lot, you travel a lot, and hopefully you'll get more time to write. <laughs> so, I, I have seasons where, um, and then I go, I have seasons where songs just flow out of me. And then I have seasons where I go into dormancy. I'm like, God, did you turn off the, the writing machine? I'm like, help me. 
Right. Well, and that's what I've heard too, is just, it's just seasons sometimes, you know, when you're just, sometimes it's just flowing, sometimes it's not, you know, but yeah. um, I just, um, that's kind of why we're doing these, just sitting down, talking with our songwriters, our apostolic songwriters, kind of just getting their take on these songs. And we just wanted to really spend some time with you tonight and talk about, um, we come to praise him. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy the, the, the uh, sound of the smaller team with this song. And I hope you really are able to take this and use it in your churches. I think it's very, very good and a strong song to bring into uh, your churches. So, Mark, thank you so much for joining tonight. It's great to see you and, and spend some time with you tonight. Uh, those of you that are uh, watching tonight, we appreciate you uh, taking some time as, uh, as we talk with our songwriters. And uh, we just want to keep pushing apostolic music forward.